Hi everybody, my name is John Lee. I'm the Vice President of ATS for APRO International. And for those of you that do not know who APRO is, we're a premier provider of scalable supercomputing solutions and we've been around since 1991. But we've really been focusing on supercomputing or HPC since 2003. Uh, uh, the, the product that I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is our flagship product, ExtremeX. Uh, and this is a product that we believe is very relevant in high performance computing, particularly these eight uh, market, uh, target markets. And the main thing about these eight target markets are the common thread that runs between these markets. And, and that common thread is really this insatiable need for computing capacity. Okay? Data grows exponentially and people are never satisfied with the status quo. They are always looking to, uh, for a better way and a faster way to solve problems. And those are industries like government and defense, weather prediction. You know, who, who can't, uh, who doesn't want to get a better feel for what, what the weather is going to be like tomorrow, for instance. Okay. Uh, our ExtremeX supercomputer was launched at the end of 2007, and it was one of our uh, most successful products. Right after launch, uh, we, uh, we delivered a 90 teraflop supercomputer to University of Scuba in Japan. And at that time, it was the number two supercomputer uh, in Japan. We also delivered a total of over 638 teraflops of capacity uh, supercomputers to the uh, TriLab community. That is Lawrence Livermore, Los Alamos, and Sandia. Uh, also, we delivered a 38 teraflop virtual wind tunnel supercomputer to Renault F1. Uh, that was utilizing a dual rail on the InfiniBand side. And the SCUBA was the first system of its kind. It was a first quad rail system. Uh, most recently, in fact, I think just a couple of days ago, we launched a, a very exciting joint venture with San Diego Supercomputing. And this is a project that was funded by NSF. And this is, a, uh, this is our collaboration with San Diego to deliver a next generation supercomputing to solve the I.O. problem that is associated with supercomputers today. So we're very excited about that. So what were some key design objectives when we set out to uh, to design a Extreme X supercomputer. Really, the main thing was we wanted to find a unique way, uh, a, a new approach to building a scalable supercomputer. And we really did that with this concept of a Lego building block, meaning once you define what that single building block is, it's a matter of simply replicating them and then being able to connect them together to scale your systems out. And the way our management software is developed, it's really designed to manage that one building block so we can easily scale out the system. We also wanted to uh, deal with the problem associated with deploying a very large system. And what I mean by that is the environmental issues, right? So whenever you're talking about a very large cluster system, you can't get away from talking about things like power and cooling. And so we have a very innovative way we are cooling our system to bring the total cost of ownership down. Okay? Uh, right now, when you're talking about supercomputers, it's not just about teraflops, right? Even though at supercomputing, we always like to talk about, well, what is the number one supercomputer? Have we reached two petaflops yet? People are already talking about exaflops. But really, ultimately, in the end, uh, performance of a system is depending on how well balanced the system is. So it's not just the processing. The I.O. is also very important. So some of the things that we've been really promoting since 2007 has been in the areas of I.O., uh, things like multi-rail. And that's really starting to take off and I think more and more people are talking about multi-rail implementation today. Finally, what good is having a lot of hardware if you don't have software to manage them, right? Because what is the roots of high-performance computing? It all started with Cray systems, right? Now we're using a bunch of commodity systems to emulate a Cray-like system. However, from a software point of view, it's really single system that you still, man uh, you still need to manage. On the software side, it's very important that you have a scalable way and you have a very manageable way to manage that particular system. Okay? And APRO, as an organization, we, uh, we envelop the entire solution around this idea of improved reliability, availability, and serviceability. Okay? Uh, this is the architecture of the system at a very high level. Uh, and it kind of highlights the, uh, the scalability that I talked about. The key thing here is, is that the, uh, we really manage this compute server group. And this compute server group consists of our sub-management node. And you can think of that like a, a group of ser uh, it's a group server. And it manages a group of compute nodes. Okay? And then it's a matter of just replicating this exact design over and over. Those are connected to our management node, which is a replicated pair. It's in an active, pa it's in an active passive state. And sub-management nodes, our group servers, are also in an active, active state as well. 
So the management node uh, sends commands to the sub-management nodes. Sub-management's re uh, responsibility is to manage the compute nodes. And obviously, we also provide connectivity to the external networks as well. This is how we're able to scale out our system from a single rack all the way up to multiple racks. Okay. Now, that's on the cluster management side. Another thing that's very important, I mentioned that uh, the, really the performance of a supercomputer really depends on how well balanced the system is. Okay, and the next thing that we need to talk about is this, uh, how efficiently can we communicate with each other? Because really, ultimately, uh, clusters are what? Clusters of independent systems. So there's a lot of inner communication happening between the systems. That's an area that a lot of focus is going on right now. One of the things that we're working with our uh, partner Intel is in optimizing dual rail MPI, okay, so that we can improve application performance to be able to utilize multiple rails. Uh, this is scalable unit very much at a hardware architecture level. So if you take a look, uh, this one rack is that uh, uh, compute server group that I showed you at the block level. Okay, it consists of four sub racks. Each sub rack holds 16 dual socket blades. Uh, each of these group is, uh, uh, is connected to uh, two independent uh, IV switches that's providing the dual rails. And simply the only thing we need to do is we need to replicate this machine over and over uh, to determine the overall size of the system. And then we provide connectivity from the edge switches to the uh, core switches to make them uh, act as a single system. It provides tremendous computing capacity. We're looking at approximately seven teraflops uh, in total peak performance, tremendous amount of memory, as well as a very well balanced system with multiple rails. We're also providing multiple rail capability on the management side as well. Okay, and uh, to, to, to many of you guys, you're thinking, well, well, why do I need multiple rails on the management side? Well, if you lose an Ethernet switch, then you lose a significant portion of your uh, uh, total system. So that's going to have an issue with uh, availability of your system, for instance. By having multiple rails on your management side as well, you assure a high availability for your entire system. Oh, one thing that I want to mention on the dual rail implementation, this is important because I have some questions coming up at the end and we're giving away prizes. What are some of the key things associated with the dual rails? First of all, by having multiple rails, you, you, you double the bandwidth. You improve the latency by utilizing both rails. And finally, you get the added benefit of redundancy. Right? If you lose one rail, you still have the second rail. You, you have a little bit of a performance degradation, but your system continues to run. Those are the three benefits associated with multiple rails. Now, this is kind of graphically to represent the scalability of the system. A traditional high-performance computing clusters uses this concept of one-to-many. And what I mean by that is you have a management server and you have a bunch of slave nodes main problem with that is when you're starting out at a very small scale, that's fine. However, as you scale your, your systems out, it's not a really scalable design. Things, to, things start to really slow down. To power up a, let's say, a 576 node or a multi-thousand uh, node cluster in this traditional method takes a very long time, right? With a scalable approach the way we talked about with compute server groups, you have a management server that are communicating directly with each group servers, and group servers are only responsible for managing their groups, uh, uh, their compute nodes. So it's instantaneous. The boot up time and the provisioning time is equivalent for the entire system of booting up or provisioning one scalable unit. And as I mentioned, to have the reliability and the availability that you need in a production system, we replicate the management server. Okay, so even if one management server goes down, your system continues to operate. And then we add additional redundancy by having a replicated pair on the sub-management group server as well. Okay, I'm going to be wrapping this up really quickly. Now, the, what makes our ExtremeX system, the, what is the secret sauce of our ExtremeX system is our ACE, which stands for Afro Cluster Engine. It's our management software. And it's designed from ground up really to make the system very easy for you to manage. Uh, it includes things like diskless operation, and we recently introduced a stateless operation, and that was to bring cost of the system down. Uh, we allow, uh, our system is capable of having a local disk image, but it's a stateless operation. What that means is the, uh, the instance of the operating system is not on that local disk. That local disk is primarily for scratch space. Uh, integrated job scheduling, as well as support for multiple rails and different network topologies. Okay, so in summary, the main takeaway for today, from today's presentation is really to talk about this building block approach to scalable supercomputing solutions. 
Okay, so we're, uh, we're kind of redefining how super, uh, supercomputers are built. Uh, we're the, having the flexibility to offer many different types of IV fabric as well as network topology. I think you'll find at this show more people talking about torus and mesh than you did in previous supercomputing shows. And I think people realize that's the only way to scale. Superior network communication capability, and of course, ultimately in the end, how do we bring the overall total cost of ownership down without sacrificing features and added uh, flexibility? Okay. So that's the end of my presentation. And this is the fun part. This is the part where I get to give away things. But nothing's for free. So I get to test and see if you guys actually listen to what I said or were just staring at me. So I got three questions here for you. It should be pretty easy. The first one is, what is the name of APRO's cluster management software? Show of hands. And Jim, you can't answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Correct. Excellent. OK, so next question. What is Extreme X building block call? This is kind of tricky because I talked about it in two different ways. Either answer will work. It is scalable unit. scalable unit right here, yes. All right, please give this man a, a t-shirt. And here comes the last question. I actually highlighted the answer for this question, so you should be able to get it, but it is the most difficult of the three questions. Name at least three advantages associated with multi-rail InfiniBand. Three things. Latency, redundancy, oh, that's close enough, right over here. Thank you very much, uh, appreciate your time.